Welcome to Omega Matters. I'm Christina. This is Bill. And today we're talking with Dr. Bill Sears, um, an MD who values and uses omega-3s in his uh, medical practice. And you have probably heard of Dr. Sears. Him and his wife have written dozens of books about healthy pregnancy, breastfeeding, childhood, life. Um, he has real passion for helping people um, practically using lifestyle medicine. And also um, he's really an expert in the world of omega-3s. Um, so Dr. Sears also is an, a spokesperson for GOID, the global organization for EPA and DHA. And he's written a book, he's written dozens of books, um, but the one that we're really excited about here is the Omega-3 Effect, where he really goes through um, in all life stages how omega-3s can help with, uh, with healthy, healthy living. So Dr. Sears, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Christina. This is my favorite, favorite nutrient on the whole planet to talk about. Thank you. <laughs> yes. And so you guys knew, knew, know each other from, how right. did you guys meet? Bill, if I think we met, and you correct me, Bill, if I'm wrong, but you were preparing to write the book that Christina just held up, the Omega-3 mm -hmm. Effect. And you convened a kind of a brain trust at your lovely home there in uh, Southern California on the, on the ocean. Uh, salmon at sunset, I believe was the theme. Uh, and uh, you had, golly, you must've had six or seven or eight of us mm -hmm. come in and sit around a table and just talk about omega-3 top to bottom. And that was a wonderful experience. I've been back a two or three times since for salmon at sunset. <laughs> well, welcome anytime, Bill. I love it, I love it. Uh, some good. other books. I, I just recently read The Healthy Brain. This is uh, one of his most recent books. He also picked up this great hands-on guide for parents and children, how to heal your child. You just write so much and you're so honest. I mean, you get down and dirty. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Dr. Pooh. I mean, let's talk about the real stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's great it's great yeah. so i'm i'm thrilled to not only know you but uh, count you as a friend and um, to be able to have this little repartee on omega-3 uh, from your perspective so yeah Tina, go for it so we are in i'm i'm interested and in, and in you have such a wide spread of things that you're ex that you talk about um you're you have a p mostly in the pediatrics and pregnancy world is where i kind of first heard about you um, but how did omega-3s pop up as your kind of favorite nutrient? Well, Christina and, and uh, Dr. Bill, the, um, like many doctors, it took a health crisis to get me to change. I had uh, colon cancer in 1997. Mm -hmm. Cancer caused me to change. Mm -hmm. And I realized one thing, one simple sentence, make health my hobby. Mm -hmm. I had a lot to live for. Lots of kids, lots of grandkids, many on the way. And so I made health my hobby, and that started with nutrition. And when I got into nutrition, the term omega-3s kept popping up. And I started with a very basic principle in medicine, that every organ of your body is only as healthy as each cell in it. So I studied cell health, the cell. And then I looked at the cell and studied it, and the term cell membrane kept coming up. Every cell is only as healthy as a cell membrane. And the cell membrane is both selective and protective. It lets the nutrients through that should come in. It protects it from nutrients that shouldn't come in. And the biggest uh, nutrient in the cell membrane was omega-3s, the flexible fat. So I thought, aha, I've got to learn more about omega-3s. So I went from the cell to the blood flow. The next principle of medicine, I thought every organ of the body is only as healthy as the blood flow to it. Better blood flow, better organ health. So I studied the blood flow. And that's when it led me to a, um, a professor, a doctor over in Norway, Dr. Nor uh, Jorn Darberg, who discovered back in the 70s, the relationship between people who eat more omega-3 seafood have better total body health, but mainly blood flow health. They, they suffer less heart disease. So I hopped on a plane, went over and spent a week fishing 
fishing for knowledge and literally fishing with uh, Jorn, Dr. Jorn. Here we are on the Norwegian fjords fishing. And he is telling me his 30 years of fish stories. And after a week fishing with him and learning from him, I came home and thought, wow, omega-3s. I, that's got to be my, my, my hobby. And if you want to learn more about something, you write a book about it. So that's when I um, had a grant and I um, invited what I called the uh, top six experts in omega-3s, cardiovascular disease, um, into our home for two-day roundtable that, that uh, Bill mentioned. That's why my wife used to say, hi, I say, oh, you're meeting with the fat boys again. Well, they weren't all boys or girls, too. But, but um, so basically, and these six experts, I bet you Bill was one. And um, what I did is I just listened to them talk about omega 3s for two days. I recorded 90 pages of notes, and that went into our book. And then I said, okay, this is fantastic, omega 3s. And so I became a spokesperson for GoEd. Mm -hmm. uh, global uh, organization for EPA and DPA, uh, and GHA, and my favorite trip was over to China when I, I'm just a simple uh, small town doc, and but I'm known as a science made simple doctor. So what they would do is they would partner me with all the experts, and uh, it, we call it the scientists and the simplifier. I was a simplifier. And the Chinese uh, Nutrition Society said, bring the American over because we'll put him on last and he'll make things simple and people will stay for the meeting. So it was so funny because I came on at the very end of the meeting after all the experts. I followed Dr. Michael uh, Crawford, who's one of the top uh, brain experts in the and omega-3s in, in Europe, uh, director of the Brain Health Institute in uh, London, England. And after his presentation, I came out on the stage with this huge PowerPoint. And I said, I want to introduce you to my partner in medical practice. And there was a big blue fish in a white coat with a sign on it that said, Dr. Omega the Third. <laughs> and Dr. Omega the Third is bragging. So I came out and I want you to meet my, my partner. Dr. Omega III, he's a neurologist, an ophthalmologist, a cardiologist, a gastroenterologist, a perinatologist, an immunologist, it's crazy. whatever you want. And so immediately the audience got it. A head to toe nutrient. Every organ of your body is healthier and happier because of one happy nutrient that flexible fat molecule, the membrane molecule, the less sticky fat, I call it. And, and I use this term sticky stuff when talking to kids, uh, figuring picture these little blue fish uh, floating down a slippery slide in your artery. And then I would have a big sign in my office that I bring to my, when I'm making hospital rounds, Dr. Omega the third in a white coat, a big blue fish say, hi, I'm here to help you heal. See, so that's just an, an overview of my life with omega threes, and I'm still learning and growing. Great, that's so great. Um, you're just even just as you're speaking now, what the, the simplifier is so needed, um, and just to break things down and, and make things clear for people. So I was actually wondering what some of your favorite metaphors are or stories are, uh, particularly in pregnancy or lactation and how you speak to pregnant women about omega-3s and pregnancy. And, and also I'm kind of curious if there's some like fear of fish uh, when you talk to pregnant women. So like, yes, yes. Well, uh, Christina, <laughs> let's, let's imagine now. Uh, let's take a trip into my office and imagine you're expecting your first baby and you and your husband are sitting there. You come for me for consultation and you're in bloom and all that. And I say to you, Christina, congratulations. You're growing a little fat head inside. Fat, what, what on earth does this doctor mean by that? I said, do you realize, Christina, 
that your baby's brain is growing the fastest in that third trimester of pregnancy than any time in your baby's whole life. You're growing that little fat head. And the reason I say fat head is 60% of your baby's brain is fat, fat. So Christina, I want you to eat the healthiest fat for the healthiest brain because the number one smartest fat in that little fat head you're growing is omega-3 EPA DHA, which, mm-hmm. and, and, I, and they, they look at me, the mom and dad look at me, we've never heard that. And I, I listen to a three magic words to see if I'm they're paying attention. That makes sense. As soon as they look at me and say, oh, that makes sense. I'm growing a little fat head. Therefore, I need to eat more fats, healthy fats for the fat head. And, and so um, that, that kind of rivets them to start eating. And then the, the husband often said, wow, that's interesting. Oh, t- tell us more about that. Well, I said, well, I, I want you to be prepared because your little baby, your little fat head inside is literally sucking the omega-3 fats out of mom. And the way Dr. Mother Nature designed it, baby gets first dibs on any nutrient. So Mm -hmm. if there's not enough to go around, not enough omega-3s to go around, baby gets a sufficiency of them. Mother has an insufficiency of them. Mm -hmm. So that little sucker, especially during (laughs) lactation, that little sucker, is literally sucking the omega-3s out of mom. Mom feels drained. And what they found is omega-3, two low levels of omega-3 for mommy brain accounts for postpartum depression, feeling drained, lack of energy. So what's good for baby is also good for mommy. So that's the type of talk I've had hundreds of times in my office. And, mm-hmm. and they just leave the office saying, whoa, tell me how much I need to take. And there's a big mm-hmm. sign in my office uh, uh, as they leave. There's Dr. Omega-3, uh, the big fish in a white coat, with a sign saying, a gram a day, I say. A gram a day, I say. So that, that's kind of um, a little trip in Dr. Bill's office. <laughs> That is great. I love that. And those are um, like, we, we're learning so much more about omega-3s in pregnancy, but really targeting in on both mom and baby and how they are connected with, the, with DHA and how you can, you need to supply mom or mm-hmm. baby, but also mom's important too. So I think <laughs> right. really so, like so how did, how did that little, uh, pretend time at Dr. Bill's office compare when you were having your babies and you were talking to your doctor? Well, I already, they asked me about supplements I was taking and I told them I was taking a DHA supplement. So they didn't talk about it at all. I doubt that it would have been spoken about um, if I wouldn't have said that because it's really not common practice. Uh, So it's hard for me to tell, but I certainly didn't get like that full description of all these, all these ways that it could be really beneficial for me. Uh, thank you, Bill, for asking that, because what I've learned in my medical practice, I'm, this is my 50th year as a medical practice. I hope I have 20 more. But um, when you give patients the why behind the what, they're more likely to do it. So instead mm-hmm. of just saying you need to take more omega-3s, tell them why. You mm-hmm. know, tell yeah. them why. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And good and have a story. Um, do you have uh, any, I would say, well, I was going to ask, do you have any like case studies or really interesting um, patients that you've had that have really benefited from omega-3s um, or in, any like interesting real world case studies, either pregnancy or lactation or, or even kids, if you want to go there? Uh, sure. And, and um, Christina, I'm a, I'm a show me the science type mm-hmm. of doctor. I think I learned that from Dr. Bill and, and um, uh, show me the science. And what's fascinating is there's science behind what we're talking about. 
-hmm. You mentioned pregnancy, for example. There's what's called the Middleton study, M-I-D-D-L-E-T-O-N, Middleton study. Mm -hmm. uh, viewers can just Google Middleton study, omega-3s in pregnancy, where they found, they studied lots of, of pregnant moms, and they found that the babies of the pregnant moms who took more omega-3s and ate more omega-3s, they turned out to have higher IQs. And that study showed that they had a much lower incidence of premature deliveries. The babies were more likely to go to term. And mm -hmm. that's why I call omega-3s my favorite, favorite grow food. But you know, mm -hmm. sometimes it takes motivation. Uh, so you asked for a couple of uh, case studies. Well, uh, one, I just, um, this the other day, I'm gonna grab it here. My, um, our uh, son, our uh, son number seven, we have so many, we have to number them. Some uh, son number seven <laughs> um, uh, has Down syndrome. Stephen was born with a different brain. So we had to nurture that brain. And so Stephen's now 32 and he's been in, um, he's doing great in a group home. And I thought, you know, I need to be sure he's eating enough omega-3s. Because I told the group home where he's in, the great, great home, a bunch of guys just having a great time, like a little farm. And I said, I want you to, I gave him a list of how much salmon I wanted him to eat how many fish oil tablets I want them to take every day, but I don't want to be sure they're doing it. So I checked the Omega, I went to, to Bill's Omega Quan, and I got an Omega-3 uh, level, and it was low. And I did the old vitamin D level from Omega Quan, it was low. So I called him up, I said, listen, these, that little blot, drop of blood tells me you are not following, following doctor's orders, following father's right. orders. Father's and orders. Not, and so see that a number like that motivated them. Uh-oh. So mm -hmm. Dr. Bill can tell if we're following directions <laughs> by a simple little mm -hmm. drop of blood. And, mm -hmm. and another, um, I, I remember have, um, uh, this, uh, this a few months ago, I had, um, it's fun being a pediatrician, but uh, parents are bringing their parents in, oh, their older wow. parents in for consultation. Yeah. Uh, and the reason is, is my hobby now is brain health. Mm -hmm. And because the fear of losing your mind is, is very rapid right now. So brain health is my hobby. So uh, a patient, a lovely mom and dad are bringing in, uh, the mom brought in her dad and it's funny, said, now, Dad, I want you to listen to what Dr. Bill has to say. And, and because she was a little bit of afraid of, of uh, early Alzheimer's, maybe in the family. So as, let's say his name was John. I said, hey, John, what do you do for a living? He said, oh, I'm an investment banker. Ah, teachable moment. Mm -hmm. I said, OK, uh, John, do you, have, um, do you have an IRA? Oh, of course. Like a dumb question. I'm an investment banker, IRA. Well, John, do you have an IRAH, an individual retirement account for your health? Mm. Or an IRAB, individual retirement account for your brain? He said, whoa, never thought of that. So I taught talking about the term preloading. Mm. I said, okay, you're, you're, you're uh, 50 right now, John. You're at the prime of your life. I want you to learn the term preload. Preload your brain right now with the nutrients that grow at the best and protect at the best. Omega-3, DHA, EPA, they're called neuroprotectants. Neuroprotectants mm -hmm. for a reason. And I started going into the how eating more seafood and getting his omega-3 tested and keeping that level of above eight is, is the best individual retirement account for his health and brain. And he said, wow, that mm -hmm. makes, sense. makes sense. And mom and dad, oh, thank you, Dr. Bill. He needed that motivation. 
-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, that's great. Yeah, that's uh, such a good example. And it's that, that you know, a lot of the research we like to do is on blood levels and looking at people over decades. And a lot of other research, which we still, it's still important, is really short. It's like three months long and you give a really high dose and see what it does. And so it's just two really different ideas. The preloading idea, I think, is where we really really want people to understand getting your levels up, giving, having a high amount in your body helps you get through a healthier pregnancy and other like life events that are stressors and cause inflammation and the, the omega-3s are mm -hmm. healers. And it's just the science behind it is so um, complex, but also so advanced, um, but you can really break it down into like these simple stories and metaphors that, that well, you, so I, I, you just mentioned two magic words, Christina. Uh, stressors and science. And that's why we call the, the omega-3s are the number one researched nutrient on the planet, over 22,000 medical journal articles. Wow. Mm -hmm. And stressors. All right, we are in a society of overload, mm -hmm. especially the young people. Mm -hmm. We call omega-3s, Dr. Omega-3, the happy molecule, the happy hormone, the happy nutrient. Because, because if you, and, and I, I go into this in our brain health book very deeply, if you go into the science of stress and what it does to the brain, and I'm just gonna do it, do, take you on a one minute little tour, that in the brain, the brain is the greatest garden ever grown. And in that garden, you have a hundred billion plants. Those plants are called nerve fibers. And those nerve fibers have three little sections. One is a cell, a big cell, like a big ball, okay? And the membrane of that cell is full of omega-3s. So the better the nerve cell membrane, the smarter you are. And from that cell uh, from that cell out comes a nerve fiber called an axon and that's how you think these electrical fibers and just like the insulation on electrical wire the better the insulation on that nerve fiber the faster you think what do you think contributes to the insulation omega-3s and they're fascinating because omega-3s are the favorite food of a cell in the, in the brain called oligodendrocytes, uh, O cells, we call them. And they're the repel, repair cells. They like, they smart wrap, like the myelin around the nerve fiber. Their favorite foods, omega-3s. And then at the end of the nerve fiber, the brain is only as smart as the connections we make. So that one little nerve fiber could make connections to five or 10,000 others. And those connections are called synapses high energy places. The greatest nutrient for the synapses is the omega-3s. So no matter where you go in the brain to make a happier, healthier brain, omega-3s pop up as the smartest nutrient you can eat or take. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, right. that's the, the brain, the eye, and the sperm are the three richest areas where DHA concentrates. And those are so important for survival. It's a pretty important nutrient i think um this is fantastic is uh I, we're getting close to time we really just wanted to have you on here to get this these great stories these great metaphors um hopefully people who watch this and our clinicians can use some of these and buy your books because they have all these really practical questions and really practical answers in them so really thank you for putting that out there um, is there anything else that you guys want to talk about? Well, Bill, I just wondered, do you have a, a YouTube channel? Where, where you know, I, I, I don't, Bill, I kind of rely on you guys to do that. <laughs> I, just, yeah, I, just, okay. I just talk. But, you know, I love to talk because um, uh, one little thing I wanted to mention, too, is uh, we've, used, we've used the uh, omega-3 testing, the omega, mm -hmm. uh, omega-3 testing in over 100 patients now. Okay. We began that back in 2013, I think it was. And mm -hmm. what's interesting is 
I have a lot of vegan patients. You know, California, mm-hmm. we kind of call it veganville. <laughs> now, <laughs> um, anyway, so the only way I can convince them to take more omega threes, even a vegan source of omega three uh, oil, if they want, is I do the blood test. Mm-hmm. It comes back, and I show them it's low. It's, uh, it comes back four or five percent. Mm-hmm. I, 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 in fact, I tell them. Uh, you need to be 8%, Sue. And if mm-hmm. you don't, if, uh, you need to be 8% for the brain health you want. And I bet you're going to come back four or five. Sure enough, comes back four or five. And they say, mm-hmm. okay, Dr. Bill, you, you win your case. And I give them how much they need to eat in, in seafood. If they're mm-hmm. not a vegan, I show them a picture of a wild salmon. And I show them the nutrient content of the brain. I say, this is a perfect match. Eat mm-hmm. more fish go fish. If they're vegan, I say you need to take a minimum of a gram a day. Now, if it's 4%, I tell them to take uh, at least 1500 milligrams a day, sometimes Mm -hmm. 2000. I said, then we're going to recheck it in a month or two Mm -hmm. to see if you get up to eight. And it's like, oh, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Bill. Uh, Mm -hmm. I'm glad there's a blood test that can monitor my progress because uh christy it's not what we eat it's what we absorb right exactly. we have high exactly. absorbers and low absorbers my wife mm-hmm. i eat more fish than my wife does and she has a higher omega-3 level see mm-hmm. so so that's why the measurement of your omega-3 index omega-3 index mm-hmm. is uh, cutting edge right now right well, that's great that. yeah we i i do consulting with some people um through our website and it's every story is so interesting and I can almost always find like the reason why their number is where it is there's always a research answer to that and absorption is the, that's there's a huge amount of interv- uh, individual variability and absorption's a huge part of that and I just think like I go towards the research studies and we always just take an average mm-hmm. but there's such a wide range in what people how people respond to a, to a regular dose so it's it's just great to be able to, to test people and, and not all nutrients can res- respond like this and you can measure it that simply. So yes. it's really lucky that omega-3s, we found a way to really track it. Yeah. So we're excited yes. about that. Yes, well, this was wonderful. Thank you again, Dr. Sears for coming on. We really appreciate it. Um, and that's all we have for today. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Bill. It's been Wish great. you well. You too. Bye-bye.